Hey, this is Matt from MasterSketchup.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you some tricks and tips for creating crown moldings in SketchUp using the Follow Me tool. So the reason why the Follow Me tool is really valuable for creating crown moldings is it automates the process of creating the corners of your moldings. So in a couple of clicks, you can extrude a profile around a corner of a cabinet and have this 45 degree corner perfectly intersected. So first, let's check out how to actually draw a crown molding. So what I'll do is I'll just delete this one here and we'll start from scratch. So the first thing you need is um, the most important thing is to make sure when you're modeling that everything is in a, either a group or a component. So for instance, if I were to draw a little cube here to turn it into a group, I want to triple click it and then right click and make group. So that's just going to make sure that when we draw our crown molding around the cabinet that it's not going to stick to the cabinet. So let me delete that and what you're going to need is a profile. So you can find a lot of profiles on the 3D warehouse. I actually have some profiles hanging out right here. So I have a crown molding, a casing, some baseboard. So what I want to do is grab the face. So I'm actually, these are in separate groups. So I'm going to triple click till I get to the face and then I'm going to copy it. So I'm just pressing control C on my keyboard and I'll come back over here and I'm just going to get back into this group. I have this entertainment center, the upper part of it in its own group. So I just need to double click to get inside of that. And so I'll, I'll click or I'll press control V to paste the profile and I'm going to start over in this corner. So I'm just going to place it in a rough location right now and then I need to rotate it. So I'll uh, the rotate tool is right here. I'm going to tap Q on my keyboard. I love using keyboard shortcuts. And uh, I'm going to click and drag. So I'll click at the starting point of the rotation and then drag towards the uh, direction where I want the rotation axis to be. And now I can just click to start and then rotate 90 degrees and click to finish. And actually, I accidentally clicked a little bit past 90 degrees. You can see here it's 92.7, but that's fine. I can just type in 90 and press enter and it corrects that for me. So it's no big deal. So the next thing we'll do is grab the line tool. We need to create a path around the cabinet in order to tell the follow me tool uh, where to extrude the profile along. So I'll grab the line tool by pressing L on my keyboard and I'll start at this corner. You want to make sure you are patient enough to make sure these uh, the inference system locks on to endpoints. So you can see the little um, text that pops up that says endpoint in components. That's really important. You want to make sure you're always using the inference system. So here I'm on that endpoint and then I'll go to this endpoint and I'll just tap escape to let SketchUp know I'm done drawing. So you can't really see the edge right now because it's it's the same it's the same edge along the cabinet, but it's there. Um, again, the cabinet is in its own group, so it, when we draw edges along the top edge of the cabinet, these edges don't merge with the cabinet because the, the cabinet is protected within its own group. So the next thing is to select both edges which just using the select tool which is the spacebar you just click one and then you hold down control and click the other and now we're ready to create the molding so I'll just grab the follow me tool which doesn't have a keyboard shortcut um, by default and then you'll hover over the profile face and click it and that's it so you can see how easy that was um, to to extrude that and actually I made a mistake because I've been extruding these uh, I've been extruding these uh, crown moldings actually from the the top edge so at this point what I'll do is to fix that I'll 
I'm going to turn this into a group because I like to keep everything organized. So I just triple click that, right click, make group, and I just want to adjust this. So I'm going to select this endpoint and I'll tap up on my keyboard, the up arrow, and that constrains me to the blue axis. So that just makes it a lot easier to uh, to make a movement in one direction. So I can just bring it right to the top of this cabinet and click and that's it. So that's that's where I'm at. So that's how easy it is to use the follow me tool to create crown moldings. But let's say that this cabinet, the size of this cabinet changed on us. I'm just gonna cheat for now and just use the scale tool to to bring this in just to make the point so let's say our cabinet size changed and we need to also change the the crown molding well we can't use the scale tool even though I just did <laughs> but uh, what happens with the scale tool is you can see it alters the profile of the of the crown molding because it's kind of, it's scaling the entire contents of that group so we can't do that but there's a really easy trick if you grab the select tool by pressing spacebar and double click to enter the group so now I can select the faces of all the the entities inside of this group and what you do is you just click and drag so from left to right you click and drag to create a selection so I'm selecting this entire leg of the crown molding and then with the move tool by pressing M, this is the move tool right here, but you can also press M on your keyboard. I can select this endpoint and to make it easy, we, we always want to try to make it easy on ourselves. To make it easy, I'm going to tap the left arrow key on my keyboard and that locks me to the green axis. So I know I'm moving in one direction only and I can go down here and reference the side of the cabinet and I've just resized that crown molding um, just by using a clever selection and using the move tool. Now let's say we wanted to delete this cabinet and we needed to edit this crown molding so that it just extends straight to the wall and we don't want to redraw it so we can just double click to open that group and create a selection box around the this leg of the crown molding and we just want to okay so so in this case because these edges here are hidden this isn't gonna work because if we if we try to move it those few points are gonna be left behind so what's happening here is you're actually there are a few edges here that are hidden so there's no way you can't select hidden geometry so we just need to turn hidden geometry on and then create our selection and now we're selecting this entire leg and we can tap M for move grab the endpoint and tap the right arrow key to lock on the uh, red axis and then we'll go right to this point and select that and then we can turn hidden geometry off and now we just need to select these edges here and tap delete and now we've got a fully continuous we've just merged all of those um, we've just merged those corners together and deleted the extra um, entities the extra edges and we now have one straight crown molding now another way to do this sometimes if it's really complex um, or hard to create a selection box sometimes what you can do is make sure you're inside the group and create a rectangle um, so let's say I want to cut off the crown uh, right here so what I'll do is create a rectangle that's the where the plane is parallel to the cut that I want to make and then I can move that rectangle to, uh, let's see here, you want to move the rectangle so it's intersecting with the crown. So just like that, I'm going to hide the rest of the model so you can see. So you create a rectangle that's intersecting with the crown molding 
and then you select the square, right click, and intersect faces with context. And that'll create edges around the crown molding right at that point. So now you can go ahead with the eraser tool, erase those edges, and then select all of this and delete that and delete all the extra edges there and you're left with this cutoff piece um, that you can that you can then extend to wherever you want alright well thanks for watching these uh, few tips on how to work with crown moldings inside SketchUp make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get other tutorials on SketchUp and layout and thanks for watching